Let's praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Amen. Amen. Another day the Lord has let us see. And I don't know about you, but I am glad about it this morning. Praise God. It's so good to see you. Welcome, welcome. And thank you for joining us today. But this is the Sabbath. This is Sunday morning. Y'all ready for some Sunday morning praise? Come on. I know you got a reason to praise them. Y'all look too good not to praise them. Y'all looking well and just all blessed and highly favored. Amen. That's wonderful. Praise God. Well, thank you once again. And, and I just invite you to just uh, open your hearts today and just give God a real good praise. There's so much going on in the world and, and we have a lot to pray over, but we have even more to be thankful about. Amen. Amen. And I'm never going to get tired of praising and thanking our most gracious and faithful God. And I trust you would agree with me. Amen. So let's stand and let's just go before the Lord this morning in prayer and just acknowledge his presence first and foremost. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Amen. Most gracious Father, God, we just, we come before you humbly this morning, God, Lord, just loving you, God, and just wanting to give you uh, the honor that is due, Father God. Lord, the honor that is due to you, Lord. We thank you, God, for your presence in this place, God. We are gathered in this it's temple, Father God, to just worship you, Lord. That is our only desire, God, to worship you and praise you, Father. And Lord, we just invite your presence into this room, Lord. Before we do anything else, God, we just bring our hearts and our minds to focus on you, God. To focus on your goodness, your grace, and your mercy, God. Lord, those things are important and special because you are are Jehovah Jireh. You are sovereign. You are Elohim, God. There is no one bigger than you, no one greater than you, Father, and yet you still choose to call us friend. You still choose to love on us, God. You still choose to just raise us up, God, even when we haven't been faithful to you, God. And Lord, I don't know about anybody else, God, but I say thank you, God. I honor you, Lord. I reverence you, Father God. Lord, we just thank you, Lord. So, God, we just want your presence in this place, God. Your power, God. Let your spirit, Lord, just rise among us, God. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings, God. We thank you, Lord, that you have, uh, you have shown favor on our, our traveling missions team, Lord, and you've you brought everybody home, Lord, safely, God. We just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the blessings that, Lord, you have allowed us to do as a church, Lord, uh, so far away, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for our events, Lord, even for yesterday, God, as we were just pouring out and loving on our community, Father God. We thank you, Lord, that we have the ability and opportunity to do that. We are your hands and feet, Father God. It is our privilege and our pleasure to represent you. So right now, Father God, we just thank you and I praise, Lord. May our praise, Lord, be sweet to you, God. May our worship be honoring to you, Father God. Most of all, Lord, may it be done in spirit and in truth this morning, God, so that everybody that is under the sound of my voice, God, receives a blessing from you today, God, Lord, that we all stand in need of, Lord. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Redeemer, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Can we just put our hands together once again and just bless the Lord and begin to, even with your mouth, just say good morning to the Lord and just bless him. Amen. Psalms 47 reminds us, oh, clap your hands, all you people, and shout to God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord most high is awesome. He is a great king over all the earth. That is the God that we worship this morning. Can we praise him? Can you help us praise him this morning? Amen. Let him arise. His spirit arise this morning. Amen. I love this song. It's simple and easy to sing, so I want you to just sing along with us. But God, we want you to arise and take your place. Ancient of days, Ancient why? Because days. he is good, for you are good, and your mercy endureth forever. Come on, sing the second verse. Arise, arise, oh God, and 
good God a good praise. Because if we're honest about this thing, he's actually been better to us than we've been to ourselves. Can I get a witness? Would you agree with that? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Come on, you can say it. And give him your praise this morning. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Simple praise. I want you to say it for yourself. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. And think about that. Think about all the dumb stuff that we've done to ourselves, to our bodies, to our minds. But his grace and his mercy sustained us. Hallelujah. You've been better to me, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. One more time, you've been better. You've been better to me than I've been to myself. Hallelujah. Come on and give God praise. You are good. So good, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You are good. So good. Nobody like you. You are good. So good. Mercy. And your mercy endures forever. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. His mercy endureth forever. What a great and awesome God we serve. Amen. Continue the praise with your mouth, with your hands, and just act like this might be your last time. You might not get another chance to wave these hands. You might not get another chance to speak these things. Water, you turned into wine. You open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you, Lord. There's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, Lord. There's none like you. Come on and let's just pray. I got a stronger God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Come on, you sing Everybody with me. Oh, I got stronger. 
answer the question, what can stand against you? Nothing can stand against you with God before you, amen? Let's just praise him this morning. Oh, God, we love you. We praise you, God. Hallelujah. And we love to sing the chorus and just remind ourselves that there is no God like Jehovah. There's 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 no God like Jehovah. Everybody sing with me, say, There's no God like Jehovah. 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 That's 
God. You're a redeemer, God. You're my way maker. And we praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Oh, give him your best praise this morning. I know who he is for me, and what I love about him is I can look at you and tell who he is for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Are uh, you glad to be in the service this morning? You're glad to be in the service one more time. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God we serve. You all always have joy in your heart because God has been that good and that faithful. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we want to just welcome you in that same spirit officially. Hallelujah. Any first-time visitors with us this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. Welcome. God bless you. Thank you for coming and joining us. Those that are online, please, if this is your first time, put something in the chat. All my folks that are normally there, please put something in the chat. Amen. And better than that, come visit us. It doesn't matter how far you are. Come on. They got planes, trains, automobiles. You can get here. We don't care how you get here. Just get here. If you can, come on, they ain't ready. They ain't ready, Shit, they ain't ready for me. Amen. Amen. You can meet us by railway. They'll sell, they're going to lose my job. All right. Amen. Let's do our welcome song this morning. Amen. All the music belongs to God, and I'm going to give it back to him. Hallelujah. Come on and let's bless the Lord one time before we love on each other. Anybody? Come on, everybody. Put your hands together. Yeah. We gonna take you there just one time. Yeah. We gonna bless the Lord. He's been that good. Yeah. Come on, you remember this. Our version. I will. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Yeah, this song. I will bless him. I will bless the Lord at all Why? times. Because he's good. Come on, personalize it. Say it for yourself. Say, I'm going to bless him. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah, yeah. He's good. Every day, I will raise my hand and bless him. Yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. He's good. Real simple. Why? Why do we bless him? Oh, say he's good. He's good. So good. So good. Real good. Each and every day of my life, I'll bless the Lord. For he's good. Yeah. All right. Now come on and take your blessing on somebody.
your seat as we continue to bless the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Ain't nothing like coming together in person and praising the Lord together. Hallelujah. As our ushers come forward this morning, let's prepare our hearts just to lighten your load just a little bit, just a little bit. Take some of that monetary weight off you this morning. Praise the Lord. For those of you that like to carry cash, and those of you who don't carry cash, that's okay. We have a solution for you as well. It is called online giving. And we don't want you to be burdened with all that extra money that you just trying to figure out where to give and all that. Don't worry about that. Right here. Right here. So visit us online. Please check out our website. Seriously, check out our website. There's some great things going on. Um, yesterday, we had an awesome, awesome community day uh, slash church picnic. Man, we had so much fun, so you'll hear more about that. But just get involved, and we just thank you for all those that made that happen. So let's bow our heads right now. Dear Father God, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. We, we bless you, Lord. I'm so glad that there is a place I can go, Father. There is a place I can go, Lord, where all my burdens are light, Father God. So, Lord, we just thank you. And right now, God, we just ask, Lord, that you just bless this offering that is given, Lord, that will be taken up, Lord. You already know what our needs are and where we are, Father God. And, Lord, we just have already committed that to you in prayer, Father God. So we just ask that you bless it right now, God, and increase it, Lord. Help us, Father God, to just reach farther and, and wider for you and in the name in your name, Father God. So we love you and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus, let all hearts say amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you have not, feel free to come into the aisles and submit your offerings. Oh, yes, he is so good. Say now won't give praise unto the Lord for He is good. Yes, He is good. Everybody say. God loves a cheerful giver, and you can give by four methods. One, visit centraltampa.org and click the Give Online link.
two. Text Exciting Central with no spaces to 73256. Three, mail any contribution to our physical address at 2923 North Tampa Street. Four, in person during service. Everyone should give whatever they have decided in their heart. 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. May God richly bless you. announcements. Amen. Welcome to the exciting Central News Network. Children's Worship Ministries. Kids age four through sixth grade. Join us on Wednesday at 6.15 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. You'll have a great time while learning how to worship Jesus through song, dance, and other activities. Dinner will be served. Parents will be preparing to be a part of Central's annual Christmas event on December 16th. So if your child loves to sing, sign them up today. For more details, and to register, please see Sister Latina McKinnon or contact the church office. Church Conference. The next church conference will be held in the sanctuary immediately after service on Sunday, November 12th. Members, you'll hear important updates on the church's operations for the previous quarter as well as plans for the rest of the year. Since important church business will be discussed, this meeting is for exciting Central Tampa Baptist Church members only. Small group classes will not meet that day. Excite Karaoke Night. Calling all singers and non-singers. Warm up your vocal cords and sing the night away at our karaoke night on Wednesday, November 29th from 7 till 8.30 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Dress in your favorite 90s gear and invite your family and friends to this fun event. There is a $2 entry fee and all you can eat popcorn will be served. Song selections will be provided from a pre-approved list. Go to our website or realm to register by November 26th. We can't wait to see you there. Christmas in the Park. Save the date for our Christmas celebration at 6 p.m. on December 16th at Waterworks Park in Tampa. Invite your friends and family to join us as we celebrate the Savior's birth. There will be musical and dance performances from various groups, a toy and book giveaway, and free food. For more details, please visit centraltampa.org. Toys for Christmas. Help us spread holiday joy for Christmas in the park by donating a new unwrapped toy for a child ages 6 through 12. Donations are being accepted until December 10th and can be dropped off at the Welcome Center on Sundays or by contacting the church office. Christmas in the Park Rehearsals. Calling all singers and music lovers. 
We are looking for adults and students in grades seventh and up to be a part of our Christmas in the Park concert on December 16th. The next rehearsal will be here at the church on Saturday, November 11th at 1230 p.m. Please see Pastor Zeb McKinnon or Sister Marissa Moore for more details. And those are today's announcements. If you'd like to replay this announcement, visit the Central YouTube channel at ECTBC5412. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you and God bless. Good morning, church. Amen. This is the time of the service that we're coming to observe the Lord's Supper. So um, as we come to this time, I want you guys to put your hearts and minds on Christ. Um, we're going to read for you uh, from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 through the 28th verse. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on you, the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and they drink for the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment upon themselves. So with that being read, we're going to take some time for you to self-examine, a time for you to reflect um, before you go before the Lord and join the service. So let's take a couple of times, a couple of minutes. Amen, Lord. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Father God, Lord, just such an honor and a privilege, Father God, Lord, just to sit before you, Father God, Lord, and just commune with you, Father God, Lord. It's about relationship with you. It's about remembrance of what you've done for us, Father God, Lord. You're the bread, Lord, that represents your body that was broken, Lord, for us, Father God, Lord. Your blood, dear Lord, that was shed on the cross, for us, Father God, Lord, we want to take this time, Father God, Lord, to put away all things of ourselves, Father God, Lord. It's not about us, Father God. It's about you, Father God, clothing us in your righteousness, Father God, sacrificing for us, Father God, Lord. We just want to, Lord, come to this table, Father God, Lord, leaving all guilt, all stain, Father God, Lord, leaving it all behind, Father God, Lord, giving it to you, Father God making it a time, Father God, Lord, where we can just sit, Father God, with you in your presence, Father God, glowing closely and closer with you. We thank you for this time, Father God, Lord, and we just thank you, as always, for this opportunity, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Such a marvelous thing for someone so wretched. Yet my soul, Lord, you have redeemed. No one else. You thought, Lord, my soul was worth it. So you gave your only son. You gave that I might live. You gave that I might be set free, exchange your life for mine. What a marvelous thing you've done. See, some folks see my fault. Oh, but you see my accomplishments Even a good work you begun in me Oh Lord, you also see my fairness Oh no, not have to Why I come before the table, Lord, that I might be you exchange your life for us. So what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing. I tell you, it's a glorious thing.
Has everyone been served? Amen. Amen. At this time, we know that he took the body, which is represented by the bread. This body that was broken for us, let us eat together. At the same time, the wine that represents the blood that was shed on the cross for us. Let us drink together. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you again, Lord, just for this opportunity once again, Lord. You said each time that we do so, we do so in remembrance of you, Father God, Lord. Let us never forget the price that was paid, Father God, on Calvary. Lord, the price that you paid for us, Father God, Lord. Let us always remember, Father God. Let us always commune, Father God, Lord. And let us always walk arm in arm in communion with you, Lord. We thank you. I pray that you bless all that have partaken today, Father God, Lord. And I just thank you so much, Lord, for all the things you do because you are marvelous, Father God. And we just love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's marvelous and marvelous, so marvelous. Marvelous. The day he came and saved me. Marvelous. Oh, yes, he did. So marvelous. Oh, it's marvelous. It's marvelous. Ooh, yes. Marvelous. It's so marvelous, yes. Marvelous. Oh, yes, it is. the blood, yes, oh, and the power in the blood, there's so much power in the blood, oh, it's marvelous, it's marvelous, the blood to save my soul, oh, it's marvelous, Thing. What yes. a glorious thing. Oh, I thank you for the marvelous. 
marvelous thing. What a marvelous thing. Oh, you've done. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. The sound quality is also so beautiful. I mean, whoever manages the sound, Freddie, everybody put your hands together for Freddie Robinson and his team up there. Oh my goodness. It's impeccable quality. We had a great time yesterday at the Fall Festival. Amen. Amen. We had a great time. We had a great time. I, I want to I wanna, um, thank uh, all those who, in my absence, kept things going. Pastor Rennie, uh, I didn't get a chance to listen to the two first sermons because we just, we're probably sleeping during church time because of the hours. But the last one I heard, and that was a classic sermon. Thank you very much. Put your hands together again. Very great sermon. Classic sermon. Very good job. Very good. I am, I mean, I am very pleased and very impressed. Uh, thank you to Deacon Richard for helping out on the prayer line when I was absent. Also, thank you. And, and for all you do, for all, all you guys do so incredibly. So we went to the Gambia. We will not be giving a report today. We'll be giving a report actually on next week because I want Sister Rudin to be here. Because we have a giant in our midst that we probably have underappreciated and way underacknowledged. This woman has, has done incredible feats of missionary work in the Gambia, I mean, it blow your mind. I want her to be honored, so we will do it next week. But I want to tell you, this family right there, they are all nuts, right on this side, right here. I love this family. You would swear these people were taking something in their coffee when they drink it. They end up all hours of the night just cutting up, just having, I mean, you could hear them like four, four rooms down just having a good time. Every day was a ball. Here was what the best part of it is. I'll, I'll save all of this for next week. But to let you know, it is so hard ministering the gospel in America. Because you, you have to beg people, beg people. And you, you, you put out real good stuff and people are still, mm. But over there in the Gambia, in a Muslim country, they eat it up. Some of them have never heard Jesus. People sit down in large numbers. They want Jesus Christ. We had imams come to, who came to Christ and, and even want to write a book about um, trans, going from uh, being an imam Muslim to a Christian. Um, and so it's, they are very, very responsive. I believe that there's a reason why God sent us on missions. There's a reason why every Mormon is required to go on missions. I don't think it's a bad idea. I believe at some point, every one of you should take the opportunity and go to a country where people have nothing, literally nothing. And when you do that, you wind up giving of yourself sacrificially until the wee hours of the night and you still don't get tired. Because the next day, we brought medicines we, brought, we gave glasses. Many, many uh, people got glasses. Jumping in the streets, now they can see. It was wonderful. We will save that for you next week. But it is good to be back in the house of the Lord. And I'm very delighted. Um, Nolan, they almost kept them, you know. Um, Nolan and them in Germany, I heard. But uh, we had a good time. Please stand with me. It's good to be back. I am very happy to be back. Stand with me. Grab your Bible. Uh, grab your Bible. Are you ready for God's word? <clears throat> Hallelujah. Grab your Bible. My spirit is God breathed. God's word is God breathed. Therefore, God's word gives me life. I am ready to hear it. I am ready to heed it. I am ready to be transformed. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. Please be seated. <clears throat> Well, today I want to talk to you about. Uh, oh, okay, today I want to talk to you on the topic, identity crisis. Identity crisis. 
the biggest crisis in the world is really not famine, war, or even global warming. The biggest crisis in the world is identity. How many of you shop online? You shop online. Oh man, most of the ladies' hands go up. I don't see the brothers shopping at all. How many of you have discovered Timu yet? Aha! Uh -huh. Ah, the Chinese have all your identity already. It's too late. So when you go on Timu, there, there is an inexhaustible number of products. That's just, you, you keep scrolling forever. And those products are in no particular category. You can see mechanical things next to um, medicines, next to clothing, because they don't know what you want. However, they have a thing called algorithms. So if your cursor or your finger, whatever you're using, allows you to linger longer on a particular item, then all of a sudden the list changes. Are you with me? Because they suspect that you like that thing because you lingered longer on it. And the list in the bottom now changes to show you more of the thing you linger on. And if by chance you decide to buy or to look at a shoe and you click and you look at that shoe, what happens to the rest of the list coming? It's now all shoes, right? They figure you want shoes. Let's say the next time you clicked a tie. Well, what happens for the next several pages? All you get is clothing of every kind. Because somebody is figuring you out. Our phones that we use, even our security systems in our house, are designed and built to track your every present moment. Literally, probably all of you in here are being tracked, all of us. Someone knows where you are at all times. Someone is paying attention to everything you do. And if you have a security system inside of your house, somebody can see you at all times. That's why I always put the body outside, never on the inside. I'm just trying to tell you that all of us have already lost our anonymity. In an ever-increasing, ever-encroaching world where the biggest crisis is now visibly manifesting itself to be an identity crisis. There is a vicious cultural war that's ripping through America and the world. A global identity crisis of gender. Things... I never heard when I was a boy have so changed that the world has changed exponentially fast in the area of social decline as it pertains to gender identity. You used to hear of LGBTQ, IA, and the numbers keep increasing. And when I speak like that, I want to be cautious uh, to you who are here and who you those of you who may be listening online, I want to be cautious that I, I am speaking out of love. Please understand. Truth must be spoken. But even as I do it, I'm not trying to put people down. I'm just trying to preach the word of God. Amen? So this is not designed that way. Uh, we're not there blasting. We're just speak, speaking truth. LGBTQIA, if you notice now, there's a little plus sign behind it. Why? Because there are too many letters to fit. Every alphabet letter has about five names in it. I'm going to show you a few, just to show you, of gender identities today. Let's start with A. A binary. A gender. Ambigender. Androgyny. Androgynous. Aborogender. Autigender. B. Bakla, bigender, binary, bisu, butch, C, 
Calabai, Calalai, cis, cis gender, cis female, cis male, cis man, cis woman. D, demi boy, demi flux, demi gender, demi girl, demi guy, demi man, demi woman, demi gender. And the list goes on. 180 genders that didn't exist when I was a boy. The world is quickly, fast, exponentially escalating a thing that is an identity crisis in the world today. And uh, the list goes on, as I said, 180, and it continues. Every website I researched, all of them had a disclaimer, these website does not display all the names. So they are possibly all that have not yet been canonized yet, but it's out in the community and in the culture. There was a time when all we knew was male and female. These days, there is cisgender, there is transgender, there is non-binary, there is intersex, there is gender queer, there is gender fluid, there is gender non-conforming, there is gender expansive, there is agender, there is gender devoid, there is gender bender, there's, sorry, there's, there's bi-gender, there's uh, omni-gender, there's pan-gender, and there's two-spirit. I have literally watched someone that I know transform right before my eyes. One week we came, and we said she, she said, I'm not she anymore. I am they. Another week she came back, she said she was it. I'm not being mean. I'm, what I'm speaking is like, it's reality. I'm speaking true. And, 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 and the pronouns have increased now. There is he, she, they, it. There is Zai, there is Sai, there is e, e, I, and there is Ian. It continues. And all of this cultural potpourri of gender is being marketed to the world on the wings of democracy of the West. Doesn't this all sound like it's out of this world? It is out of this world. It is. The Gen Z, the people who were born between 1997 and 2003, depending on the website you, you choose to quote, and I'll quote both, therefore, both ranges, between 21 to 30% of all of them are LGBTQIA+. That age group, Gen Z, has really mushroomed a lot with crises, personal internal crises of gender. People may look at this as a social problem, but it's not really a social problem in its core. Identity crises arise out of one's perception of who you are. And because we are essentially, fundamentally spirits who have a soul and live in a body, our true identity is our spirit. Therefore, it makes identity crises a spiritual problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's a deeply spiritual problem. It's the core of who you are. It's your identity. That's now in question. So what is identity? Slide number seven. Identity is who I am or who I think I am that informs and directs my personal values, choices, decisions, and directions for my life. These things are not just casual things people do out of convenience. These choices are directing people's entire life. And consequently also, the structure of society and the life of everybody else also. And as much as we disdain, we may choose to disdain LGBTQIA+, many Christians are also in an identity crisis. Many people looking at me right now may also be in, in, in an identity crisis. This is why in this sermon I need you to be alert for yourself or possibly for somebody else. Identity crises are very pervasive and they affect everyone. Nobody is accepted. They are the result of the agency of demonic spirits seeking to pervert humans 
so that the image of God does not get exposure. Are you with me? So that the image of God is not revealed in the world and God gets glory. That's why he made you. So that you and I would reflect his character and image in the world. And his glory would fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. The enemy does not want that. So he's destroying the glory of God, the image of God in you. That's the intent of that. Human beings are more affected by spirits they don't see than by spirits they see. More, much more. Ephesians 6.12 tells that to us. It says, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in, heavenly, in the heavenly realm. That's what you're fighting. All of us. Yeah, you might have a fight with somebody now and then. Yeah, you might fuss with your mother, your father now and then. Your biggest issue is not them. Your biggest issue is that there is a battle warring against you that is invisible to the human eye. But it's as real as you and I sitting in the pew here today. Hebrews 12, 9 tells us that God is the father of all spirits. And we know that God exists in community, in communion. Always, he has always been those three spirits, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, before the Son manifested in flesh. They were all three spirits who were in union one with another. All spirits are designed for union. All spirits. God designed them the way he is. No spirit wants to be by itself. When God created Adam, he allowed Adam to experience aloneness. And for the first time, God says it's not good for a man to be alone. So God created a helper. Everybody say helper. Come on, say helper. So God created a helper for him, and God joined the spirits together. That's what marriage is. Marriage is a joining of two spirits. Two spirits become attached to one another by affection and by affirmation. I love her, and I expressed an affirmation. I do. Those two things consign and conscripted two spirits to always be attached to one another. And many people looking at me now and online don't realize by, by those same two things, by your affection and by your affirmation, you've conscripted many spirits to be attached to you. And they come to help. Not to help you, but so you can help them because although no demon is by itself, demons are always come in groups. And those of us who do exorcisms know that. They come in groups, in categories. But they cannot fulfill their purpose here. They were designed for an heavenly, unseen realm. To fulfill their purpose here, they need a physical being. So they seek to attach to human beings to fulfill their purpose, to help them, to become their helper. So they are not alone. Are you with me? As I speak to you, I want the spirit of power and of boldness to be upon you. I don't want any spirit of fear and intimidation from anybody listening to me. Are you with me? Okay. Notice I'm not speaking about demonic possession. A Christian cannot be possessed. A Christian can be attached. I am referring to attachments. And just as the devil came to Adam in the dawn of creation, very early in the time of innocence, so it is that most of our human attachments occur in the dawn of our development. Pay attention, in the dawn, most of us had compromise early in our development, some as early as before they could talk. Early in the dawn, early in the dawn of human development. Demonic spirits become attached to us very much like dogs or puppies do. How many, how many of you have a dog? How many of you own a dog? Thank you very much for putting your hands up. The question I ask you is, who owns who? Now think about it. Think about it from the perspective of the dog. 
Answer me. When you walk, who pulls who? Who is pulling who? Who is in front leading? The dog. The dog thinks you are its human. Oh, oh seriously. Who picks up whose poop? Yeah. Okay. Pick it up. Pick it up. Pick it up. If another dog comes close to you or a stranger, who tries to protect who? The dog. Don't touch my. He believes he owns you. That's why he's jealous over you and tries to protect you. I'm trying to tell you that spirits similarly attached to human beings for what may appear to be aid initially. But at the end, they are called dominions. They are called principalities. Therefore, they have to dominate somebody and there must be a principle over somebody. They want to be first. It is the nature and character of the devil to want to be first. Isn't that correct? They want to be first. If they're attached to you, you must serve them. That's the intent. Stay with me, everybody. This sermon is for everybody who's listening to me. There's nobody accepting. As you hear me speak, don't think I'm talking to the next person. I'm talking directly to all of us, first and foremost to this pastor who is looking at you right now. This is a sermon in which people can get delivered if they listen today. There's an intent to it. Through our affections, our affirmations, and our actions, these spirits can attach and become so enmeshed in our thoughts, feelings, and emotions that they remain undetected. Like the tears remain among the wheat until the root pro produces a fruit. And then you can de deduct backwards from the fruit that there had to have been a root. Are you with me? So most of us looking right now, it's, it's really late. By the time the fruit is showing up, it means a root was there way long time ago that was ignored. And most people who are a host to a demonic spirit are themselves not capable of detecting its presence because they are using the very compromised consciousness that they have and therefore cannot detect it. Because it's seamlessly operating through your very thoughts and attitudes. Are you with me? And emotions. Everybody legitimizes their emotions. And so you don't uh, illegitimize your own emotion, and you don't seem to realize that the choices you're making in life are not necessarily choices that you are making independently, but choices that are heavily influenced by spirits in your life who want to host you to accomplish purposes for them. So God created Adam and Eve to reflect himself and all of us. That is the true identity of every human being. Our true identity is God himself, to reflect him, to be like God. We came from him 100%, just like I came from my mother and father 100%, but I am not my mother and father. But I am everything they are, yet I am not them. God is so good to reflect him in a visible and tangible way on earth. But when Adam and Eve sinned in the dawn of creation, human nature changed, and Adam and Eve no longer reflected God spiritually, socially, or naturally. They lost that ability to do that. And instantly, fear and shame rushed in to fill the spiritual vacuum that impelled human beings to contrive pretensions to cover up their true deprived way. Instantly, Adam and Eve contrived pretentious ways to cover it up. Jesus himself says, all men are liars. All of us cover up. Are you with me? All of us like people to think we are more than what we really are. We hide and conceal and we have fig leaves. All of us, all human beings do that. Because they are deep, Things about ourselves that are deficiencies that we don't want to be revealed and seen because of it's for the true thing that it is. So all of us contrive pretensions and cover ups, fig leaves of our own making. Because nobody wants to feel the pang. 
of being rejected as Adam and Eve felt. They no longer felt acceptance from God. When Adam and Eve felt, what Adam and Eve felt on that cool of the evening was a spirit of rejection. And this is the sensation that fuels the identity crisis I'm talking to you of today. It's a deep-seated spiritual attack of rejection of one's own self. When I reject myself, I automatically reject God. Because I was designed to reflect his image. Are you with me? So when I don't acknowledge who I was, I am created to reflect. When I reject me, I reject him. And a lot of people go through life dealing with rejections of various kinds. That we will talk about today. The spirit of rejection strikes very early in human development. Very early. In almost in your time of innocence like Adam. What happened with Adam is still happening to each of us. All of us still have those choices to make. I remember as a boy, I was probably about five or six years. We didn't have the means that most, like this nice little playground we have right there. I came yesterday and the playground was boarded up because it was too dirty. I'm saying, can you imagine if I had that growing up? We didn't have that. Dude, you tie a big rope in a tamarind tree and you go for it as best you can. But in my village, there was a young man called Patterson. Patterson, if you are listening right now, it sits big up. He lives in New York. Patterson got, a, got him a swing set. Oh, I was passing by my father's shop. I passed the shop and I went. I looked, I, I, I saw his house. He's swinging boy, back and forth. And Pearl, one of the prettiest girls in the village, is next to him in the next swing, and they're just swinging away. You get your swing set, you get the pearls, boy. Oh, Pearl was happy. I came by, no Pat is my friend. I came by waiting for Pat to give me, back when we say vep, vep means give me a ride. So if you want a ride from a car, you ask him for a vep. So I say, after a while, I see he's not even paying attention. I say, Pat, give me a vep now. He said, boy, get out from there, boy. I, was, I felt, as a young boy, I felt so much rejection. He probably doesn't even remember the event, but I was crushed in my spirit. That was the first time I recall feeling that somebody had totally rejected me. Some of you may have felt rejection early in your, I don't know. You know. If I had more time, I would ask you and take a mic and ask you uh, to tell me sometimes earlier in life when you felt rejected. When you that small and vulnerable, rejection goes far. But the second time I was older and I was in the porch of our, of the, of our church, I was not saved very long. I was very new, still trying to find myself around. Pre-teen it was, pre-teen. And this guy, he was handsome, um, um, and, and he looked at me, Clem Schillingford. It's it, Clem. So if you're listening, big up again. Here's what Clem said. Clem said, my goodness. Dude, your nose is taking up your whole face, man. Your nose, you can understand, you know, you're not supposed to be that, you know, it's not no big joke. Why is he, I mean, he's falling down laughing. Okay, be nice. He said, your, but your nose is taking up your whole face. I've never seen a big nose like that and everybody around laughed. Brother, I could have gone under, but I was crushed, deeply crushed. I laughed a little, you know, I chuckled, but on the inside, if I could go under a rock, I would run. From that day on, Pastor Z, I started squeezing my nose, squeezing my nose, squeezing my nose. I would squeeze the bridge right here. I'd squeeze it, squeeze it. Then I'd take a close pin and I would put it here. When the boys were, you can understand, don't be okay, don't be. I keep squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And you know what? Day after day, I'd do it. And there were days before I go to bed, I'd watch in the big mirror and say, it's working. The thing is working to my own self. I swear, dude, you look half decent. But when I wake up in the morning and I look at myself, ah, it's back. <laughs> because in the morning, you know, before you fix yourself, all of you know what I'm talking about. Before you fix yourself, you see your real identity. Ah! Dude. My sister said that when God finished making me, 
He forgot my nose and he was about to leave and he just, he flinged it. And it just stuck right, that's what she says. Adding insult to the injury. Dude, I could not talk to a girl because of the consciousness of this nose. I just knew I, I was rejected. I, I, it was hard. So I found me this little guitar. And I learned to play the guitar. I'm trying to tell you, I'm going somewhere. I learned to play that guitar so good that my sense of identity became attached to performing. I said, I might not look good, but I could play this here guitar. I never, ever was in public without the guitar. Everywhere I went, I polished that thing. We didn't have the right thing. I used vegetable oil, okay? I use fish. I polish every chair with a shining guitar. That was my identity. There are many young people walking about with this one shoe they have. Not all their shoes cost $400. But that one shoe they have. There are some of them who won't even play volleyball because of, the, because of their good shoes. Hey! I'm messing with him. <laughs> I said, let's play volleyball. He said, I don't have the shoes. I said, dude, you have sneakers on. It might bend, you know what I'm saying? They'd be walking like penguins like this, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> because their shoe, their entire identity is wrapped up in the fact that I got a shoe that costs 175 bucks. I am somebody. <laughs> oh, Jesus, identity, identity. But, 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 this early life assault may have had human agency. But they had demonic etiology. So there are many kinds of spirit attachments. Today I'm only going to talk to you about one of them, which is the spirit of rejection. And no, it's not a series, okay, as much as I would like to. It's not a series. Uh, let's jump into it. Number one, the source of spirit of rejection. There's a spirit called the spirit of rejection. Spirits have names, all of them. Every star has a name. Every demon also has a name. And as far as I've seen, I have never seen a human being, and you ask him, what's your name? And he says, I ain't got no name. Every product you make has a name, right? Everything has a name. And therefore, there's a spirit of rejection. The spirit of rejection is sourced in a fundamental lie about who you are. It's a lie. It's a lie. Anytime you see somebody in a gender identity, gender identity crisis, they are dealing with a philosophic demon. There's lies, philosophic lies that are being told. That's why many times this thing exacerbates when you get into intellectual environments like universities and colleges. Because it's philosophically driven. It's a lie. It's a big, big lie. That's the source of it. It's not just random thoughts, but spiritual warfare in your mind, in your will, and in your emotions. That is in your soul. And it can happen to Christians, not your spirit, but your soul. The oppressive spirit looks for areas in your mind, in your will, in your emotions that lack or desire love, acceptance, and self-worth. And it works with the orphan spirit that taunts you with feelings of worthlessness, causing a sense of abandonment, loneliness, alienation, and isolation that recur in incremental intervals that I call algorithm of the spirit. Think about this with me. When you get tempted by a thought, the thought goes away, but it will come back again at predictable moments. Am I correct? And if you give it more attention, if you leave your cursor too long over it, what happens? It will increase the interval of time by which it's coming. Are you with me? It's the same thing that's happened online when you shop. If you spend a little time on that thought, on that temptation, on that desire, on that affection... It increases the interval of time. The less time you spend is the less the interval. There are algorithms of spirit when it comes to temptation. I'm not going to get into that. What are the signs? 
the signs of that usually can be detected. Once you start seeing signs, it means it has already borne fruit. Okay? It has already borne fruit. Uh, it, they can be difficult to detect without the discerning presence of the Holy Spirit or somebody who is discerning, who is also loving, that can help. There are many different uh, kinds of signs. I'll just mention a few, but uh, we don't have time to be exhaustive. But abuse, especially early life abuse, physical and sexual and emotional. People whose consciences have been overstimulated by too much regulation, too much rules that don't let them feel love. Uh, depression, deep desires to belong, deep desires to be loved, especially by one or two parents, discontent with someone's external appearance, fears of feeling that I'll never be able to get out of this. Feelings of insecurity, hopelessness, and worthlessness. Feeling that you never ever fit anywhere and you never measure up. Low self-esteem, needs for approval from others. Many people, including myself, go through life think, always needing somebody to tell you how good you're doing. It took me a long time to get over that. I don't need it. There was a time I needed it. I lived on it. I watched every face to see, are they enjoying this? If they're not, I am bothered by it. Because I want people to be, I, I was born to please. That's why in my family, I am the comedian. Because I don't like tension. Whenever there was tension in the house, I find a way to make a joke. Because I like approval. Pay attention to that. Self-pity. Oversensitivity. People who get offended too fast. Unresolved emotional wounds and the list goes on. How to solve it in the next few minutes I have. Let's talk about that, the solutions. As you can tell, normally if I do a sermon that does not have um, follow-ups to it, then I tend to put a lot into it because I don't want to have a second sermon. So please forgive me if I'm giving you a lot of content. I don't want us to come back to this. The solution. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. All right. If you are enjoying the sermon you are hearing, you can go on your Facebook page, click share, and click post, write post, write post, and just send it to somebody else. Anytime in church, if you're hearing something you think somebody might be blessed, pull out your phone, go in there and just click right below. It says share, click write post, and the service is now in your Facebook page and all your friends. Okay? So that's important. What I'm saying today, especially from this point on, the solution to it is very important. Um, okay. Number one, how to solve it? A. Recognize, repent, and renounce the spirit of rejection in your life. No demonic attachment should be tolerated. They all come for one purpose. To steal, kill, and destroy. That's all it is. Don't flirt with that with the occult. Don't flirt with it. So evaluate your life to see if it bears fruit of the things I'm talking about. And if it does, it means there has been and maybe still are roots there that needs to be pulled out. See, what's happening with us is we just take fruit out. But it's going to bear more fruit. Are you with me? I don't care how much you take the fruit out, more is coming. We have to pull it out at the root. So evaluate your life to see if it bears fruit of any earlier developmental root. Secondly, receive the spirit of sonship. Very important. Receive the spirit of sonship. Everything from Genesis to Revelation, sonship. That's it. Sonship. A king who had sons. That's the whole story. In the hierarchy of human needs, it has been determined that the most important need is love and acceptance. And indeed, love and acceptance are how children develop self-worth. However, if love and acceptance are lacking or are con conditional, even perceptually so, 
a child may develop low self-worth or a performance drive. And a performance drive is a slave identity. A performance drive is the need to do something in order to be worth something. And you always have to perform. This performance drive is the development of what is a slave identity rather than a son identity. Slaves have masters, sons have fathers. Slaves serve out of duty, sons serve out of love. Slaves are motivated by punishment, sons are motivated by empowerment. Slaves are often sons are offspring. Slaves rely on workmanship. Sons rely on relationship. God wants to move you past this dutiful Christianity we have. This religion of duty that lacks relationship. We keep doing, 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 but we're not being, being, being. He wants us to move first into being a son. Relishing, relishing the relationship and not just the activities that we do. Slaves are constantly fearful. Sons, sons are eternally safe and secure. Never to be condemned by their father. Slaves have a sense of worthlessness. Sons have an abiding sense of significance. Slaves expect punishment and sons expect favor. Slaves have a spirit of fear. Sons have a spirit of power, love and have a sound mind. Self-control. Slaves have a timid disposition. Sons have a boldness that comes from the father. As bold as a lion. So most Christians do not understand that the spirit of sonship. They don't understand the spirit of sonship. Because they don't understand the spirit of adoption. Let's see if I can break it down for you so you understand. Everything in the Bible has to do with sonship or with adoption. Bear with me for just a while. To understand the spirit of adoption, you must understand the Holy Spirit. It all has to do with the Holy Spirit. Turn to Romans 8.15. Romans 8.15. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage. That's what I'm talking about. That bondage spirit is not ours. That's why we don't become slaves to tradition. You did not receive the spirit of bondage to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. Come on, everybody say Abba. Abba. Say Abba. It's the Holy Spirit that gave you the privilege to be able to say that. 16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we also might be glorified together with him. Paul is here using an analogy of human adoption. So I have explained it in the past, but let me explain it again. In America, in most of the West, we have a concept of adoption, meaning, meaning, meaning that somebody is taking a child that is not their natural child, to whom they don't have natural parentage, and bringing the child into their family to be its parent. That's our idea. That's not adoption. Please understand, listen to me very well. Everything God has for you is in adoption. If you as a Christian don't understand adoption, you don't understand the Bible. Everything God has for you is wrapped up in adoption. So get it, get it, get it. Please, get this. Get it so well that you can explain it to somebody else. It's so important. In Roman times, all children bond and free were slaves. Every child was a slave. Even you are aware too, when there was slavery here, it was the slave that raised the master's kids. They call them a, a nanny. Because the child is a slave. The child is a servant. All. And they did not get the father's name. That's not hard to understand. In a culture where I came from, where fathers have outside children, and not all of them he accepted. Everybody say accept. So I have had in the village kids look just like me. And everybody knows that's your brother. Everybody knows that's your brother. But daddy did not accept. 
As a matter of fact, she's not here today, but she, she would know what I'm talking about. Alpha back there is my sister. Growing up, we were not brothers and sisters. We never said hello to one another. We didn't know one another in the same village because daddy didn't accept. Everybody say accept. That was his daughter, but he didn't accept. It didn't have his name. Are you with me? So not all children got names. Slaves got nicknames, not names. It is no wonder black people, we have so much nickname like that because we came from slavery. Are you with me? There are black people I don't even know. I have never known their name. All I know is Bone. We call this guy is Bone. I have no idea what his name. We don't care. We love nicknames. Nicknames are for slaves. Royalty don't do nicknames, you know, in, in Britain right now. So, so, so they give them a nickname. But when the child becomes 13, if the child meets the pedigree requirements of the father, who is usually an oligarch, a rich oligarch, he can't just make anybody his son. Even his born children in his house are not his sons until he accepts them. At age 13, he goes to court. And if the child meets the pedigree of discipline that they received from the slave training, the servanthood training, the discipline, if they met the pedigree, he confers sonship upon them. It's important. He dresses the child for, for that occasion. The child is dressed in a toga virilis. That's an adult toga, a manly robe, they call it. For the first time in his life, he puts on a manly robe and he is given the nomen gentilicium. That is the first name of the daddy. So at that function, he gets daddy's name for the first time. That's how, that's how Octavius got Julius as his first name. So at that event, the daddy accepts him as son and two things happen. He gets daddy's name. Remember, he got the robe. Remember the, the, the prodigal son? When he came home, he got the, he got the robe. So, so at that 13-year-old event, he gets daddy's name. You know, name in that part of the world is not the thing they call you. A name depicts your character. So he gets all the character of daddy. But the second thing that's important, pay attention, is that he becomes joint heir at that function. At that function, he does not have to wait till daddy dies to get his inheritance. At that function, he's now incorporated into the estate and he and daddy own everything together. I'm trying to get somewhere to show you who you are. To show you the identity when Christ saved you and the Holy Spirit put you into sonship. When you became, I'm going to forget the notes for now and just wrap up. When the Holy Spirit brought you into sonship, what happened to you is Jesus Christ gave you his name. I don't know if, you, if you've checked in the Bible. But there's a verse that tells me that that name is a name that's above every name. You, you know the power of that name. It's yours. By sonship, it was given to you. When Moses went out to get the Israelites, the most important thing he had to know is, what is the name? He asked him because it has to do with a name. In what name are we going to do this? What name are you going to put on the Israelites? The priest was supposed to put the name of God on the Israelites. He put, and what was the name? Listen to me, exciting Central Tampa Baptist Church. What was the name that was put on them? I am. Why? Because you two are an I am. Just like your daddy is an I am. And when you look at yourself and you say, I am this and that, it comes to pass. So be careful of your affirmations about your identity because you are decreeing things on your children, decreeing things on yourself when you say, I am. Put that name, put the name on them. Oh, glory to God. I'm, 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 try, I'm, I'm trying to help you. So the, the child is a slave. Now, now watch this. When the church started. I'm going to take you to Abraham. I'm going to, a few more minutes and we finish. I'm going to take you to Abraham. 
when God started the church in Abraham, you know it started in Abraham by faith. Are you with me? God told Abraham, oh, all of the blessings, blah, 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 blah. And then the next verse in Genesis 12, he says, but know assuredly that first of all, your descendants are going to be what? Slaves. The son is always a slave first. So when Moses sprinkled the blood of the covenant on all of them, that act entered them into bondage. And in the Old Testament, the church was a slave under a slave master. I'm trying to explain adoption to you. Until the fullness of time. That's the age 13. When Jesus came, fullness of time. He sent the Holy Ghost who conferred to you. And there was no Holy Spirit to give nobody in the Old Testament because they're slaves. But when the Holy Spirit came, I have so many verses in there. But I'm just going to leave that alone to show you. When the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, he brought sonship for all of us. And so, and so the Holy Spirit changed the church from the state of being in bondage to the state of now being fully accepted and adopted. Are you with me? That's your new and true identity now. Your new and true identity is that you are free. You are totally free. No bondage. No bondage. Anytime you create bondage, it is not the Holy Spirit. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is what? Come on, say it if you know it, people. Liberty. Freedom. You're free. You're free. The church has moved now into a state of existence and living in this day and age in which you and I are no longer bond people, but we are free people with Equal rights to everything Jesus Christ has. I am sorry. Everything Jesus has now is yours because you are a joint heir. That's your identity. Are you with me, people? That's your identity. Live it. But many of us are robbed of that identity because of affections and because of affirmations and actions that cause demons to be conscripted to us. To steal everything we have. To kill and to destroy. You were made to reflect God. That's who you are. That's your identity. You were made to reflect the most powerful being in the universe. And you are so identified with him that you are sitting together with Christ in the most powerful place in existence. At the right hand of the Father. That's you right now. Why are you not happy? Why are you not motivated in the things of God? Why are you lacking so much stuff? Why are you so sad and broken down and have no victory? Why are you a victim to the enemy? Attachments. Attachments. When I started, I told you about how algorithms are created. There is a thing now in the world that we, I didn't hear about when I was growing up. Identity theft. Somebody who is doubling like you, who's taken your identity and using it to further his cause. You see, God reveals things so you understand what's happening in the physical. It's also happening in the spirit. Identity theft happened in the Garden of Eden. That's what it was. That's exactly what it was. God created man in his image and in his likeness. Somebody came around and stole that identity to carry out his purpose. And so it is in the world. Men are walking all over the world right now, not reflecting the one who created them, but reflecting the character of the other guy. Identities have been stolen for a long time. And maybe some people here today may have attachments on you. 
how did you give up your identity so that everywhere you go, people are tracking you? Do you remember telling anybody yes? No. That was in pride consent. When you click on something, I don't know what that thing was. Something you clicked on gave right to a company to take all of your information and track you, all of you. We have all been tracked. Every single day. Everything you buy, is somebody is recording it and selling it to somebody else. They're just tra trafficking your identity all over. Put your name in the, in Google your name, you'll see what's out there in, in the internet. It's amazing. No matter where I go, when I start to put my name, Lennox Zamor, my address just populates itself. Everybody knows everything. Tracked, tracked, tracked. I'm trying to tell you, that is a reflection of what's happening in the spirit realm. Where there are attachments to people. You just can't get happy. You just can't be productive. No matter what you try. And there's a spirit of continuous spirit of a sense of rejection, a sense that things are not going to work, a sense that, 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 that you know, bad things are going to happen. Any second now, it's going to happen to you. That's that sense of foreboding sense of rejection is filling the spirit. And so many people, they try to fix the depression. But the depression is just a fruit that manifests from a root that was there a long time. Ago. And every day the enemy plugged a little more. Every day he plugged a little more until ultimately the fruit that happens is aloneness. It's not good for a man to be alone. Withdrawing someone from everyone. So today we end. As we end this sermon. Recognize, repent, renounce spirits of rejection. Receive the spirit of sonship and affirm it, who you are. Reaffirm your identity with every thought. Every thought. Take captive every thought. Listen to me, people. Take captive every thought. The minute it enters, here's how God has given me the victory over pornography. Don't entertain it for a microsecond. Don't entertain it. Don't let your finger linger on the product. As soon as you see it, reject it. Is everybody hearing me? Whatever is the thing that the enemy is using to entrap you, as soon as you see it, reject it immediately. Every thought must be brought subject to the knowledge of Christ. Every thought. That's the battle we're in. Every thought. Every thought. No bad thought is given a residence. Watch the choices you make in your affection. Because your affection is conscripting demons to you. By the things you like. If you like bloody movies where they blow everybody up. It is because there's an affection you have for revenge. For com competitiveness. There's a character trait of the enemy that is being embellished. When you like things like that, it attracts it. Are you with me? And they come and they attach into your life. So be careful with all of those things. Restore your discipline through prayer, Bible study, and fellowship. You cannot be alone without worship. You got to come to the house of the Lord. Amen? You got to come. You think, oh, it's just no big deal. I just pick and choose. I'll go online. But eventually, pastors are supposed to watch over your soul. And they can't do it online while you're watching a screen. Remove all fleshly obstacles like resentment, unforgiving spirits, anger, rage, all those things. Remove those characteristics from your life. And rejoice in your newfound liberty. Whom the Son says, free is free indeed. I have come to an end. It is so beautiful. Stand with me. Now are we the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God, he says. Listen to this. I, 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 I try the best I can. And, and here's the hardest thing. The people you love the most... You talk and you say things and just watch you like. And you say, how can I make them, how can I make them, you can take people to the water, you can't make them drink. I'm pouring my soul out right now to you to let you know that you're not supposed, the kind of life you have right now should be reflecting God. You cannot stay in a broken state all the time like that. There's something causing it. There's something causing it. 
I want to encourage you. There's an altar. In love. Always in love. If anything you heard resonates with you and you want prayer, come down to the altar. Don't, don't start singing yet. Come down to the altar. Come down to the altar. Come, come to the altar. If you've never accepted Christ as your Savior, can you find the song, Abba, Father, for me? Put up the words of Abba, Father, Abba, Father. There's an altar right now. I know we have class, but this is deliverance for some people. Don't walk out of here thinking it's the next person. If there's an attachment that you think, come and get some prayer. We'll anoint all you. All. If you'd like to accept Christ as your Savior, come also. If you've never been baptized, you are unprotected. You are living outside of the sign of the covenant. If you were in Israel in the time of Christ, you would be killed for not being circumcised. That was the sign of the covenant. Our sign of the covenant is baptism. That's your protection of the covenant. If you've not been baptized, you need to get baptized. Do we look? Are you there? Yeah. We good. You more real than oh Lord. ground I'm standing on. Come, we can worship the Lord. Oh Lord, you more real than. with my 
my own demonic attachments. I've had, I've had attachments I had to get help with. I had to get help with. Demonic attachments run in the family. It runs, it's generational. If everything in your life keeps getting aborted, everything is dying. If there is barrenness in your life, there could be a spirit right there. Break them, break them. I belong to you. Could you worship a little with me? And I call his name and say, I'm 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 Thank you, thank you. I know I belong to I you belong now. To you. you, my daddy. No good thing will you withhold I'm from those who walk upright. Identity is the I am you say. And the I am you are is the I am God says you are. And many of us are walking, contriving I am's that are not ours. Accepting failure that was never intended for you. Accepting bondage that was never intended for you. Accepting diseases that was never intended for you. I'll put on them none of these diseases. Accepting conditions that was never your father's expression of himself. You are the expression and effulgence of himself. That's what you are. His character in this flesh still. But the Bible said, now are we the sons of God. It does not yet appear what we shall be. But he says, when he appears, the Bible says, we're going to be just like daddy. We're going to be just like him. Just like daddy. You already that way in spirit. We're just waiting for our body to put over that spirit. But our souls are entangled. Entangled. Conscripting demons to us in so many choices we make. My time is up. Oh Lord. Let's pray. Just one more time. Raise your hand with me. Say Abba. I belong to you. Come on, worship freely. Claim it, claim it, claim it, claim it. Say it. Let every spirit attached leave you in Jesus' name. Call him. Every demonic spirit attached by whatever means. Every worshiper, raise your hand, everybody. Because my prayer is going to be for the people who are raising their hand. 
Every hand raised. In the name of every, all the children, raise your hand. Raise your hands. All the kids, ra children, raise your hands. Everybody, if you're next to a child, tell them raise their hands. By the hands raised right now, we indicate that these are people who belong to you and you belong to them and their intended identity is to reflect you. We don't have no crisis along that line. We know who we are and we know whose we are. We pray, my God, that we will, reflect, we will re reflect you in every way on earth. That when they see us, they see power. When they see us, they see love. When they see us, they see prosperity. When they see us, they see people who are confident in who they are. When they see us, they see the reflection and image of who the invisible God is. Let it be so for everybody, Father. Let them inherit everything that Jesus Christ has for them because they have a right to it. They have a right to it. Adam had a right to the tree of life and he didn't take it. All of you listening to me right now, you can get right to the tree of life, but some of you will not take it. You're doing the same thing Adam did. Accept it today. Let's transform from the inside out. When they hear us and they look at us, they will know. As every demon knows when he sees you, he knows your name. You have that name. Walk worthy of it. Father, I come to you right now for all your children. Here they are. If your hands are tired, you can rest it right here if you want to. But by right now, if you have to put it down, I will understand. Father, here they are, standing before you at the altar. At the altar. Quickly, get oil. Put on everybody. Oil, oil. Put on everybody. Oil, oil. In, in there is some oil. Put oil. Always, always have oil. He has some right here. Get, get another bottle. Quickly. We are out of time. Put oil on every single person. Every single person. Put oil. Anoint them with oil. Everybody. Anoint with oil. In the meantime, say, Abba, say, Abba. Oh, daddy, daddy. I belong to you. I want to look like you. I want to talk like you. I want to be like you. Oh, I when they see me, I belong to I want them to see you. That's how you designed it to be. Oh no, everybody has oil. We are praying. Anybody with the anointing? Pastor at the front. Pastor at the back. Uh, I'm forgetting your name. Pastor, come to. Come join us. Come, come join us. And come, man of God. Good man of God. Hallelujah. Deacons help me too. Deacons come and help me. You have the anointing too. Come, come, Dick. Come, just come. Hallelujah. Just be, be up there. Dick Williams, just come, 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 join me. Come and join me. Don't take for granted what we are doing right now. Don't take that for granted. Okay? It's okay if you can put your hands down if you're tired. Oil has been put on you. Bring me down just a little. Hallelujah. Pray as you see fit with your eyes open. Hallelujah. Father, we come to you right now with people who have come to the front and they've come in response to fruit in their life that suggests that there is a root that they don't want. Somewhere in childhood, a seed was sown and it took root in adolescence and in adulthood is bearing fruit. They don't even know where it's coming from. They have hurts and hung ups. They don't even know where they got it from. They grew up in a good family, yet they feel crushed and rejected and they don't know where that came from. They were full of love. They lacked nothing growing up, yet they think they are lacking everything because there is a demon conscripted to bring that feeling of rejection, dejection, and loss and darkness when they are in the kingdom of light and they feel they are in the kingdom of, of darkness. For all the people here today, I come in the name of Jesus Christ with the great pastors and also deacons who have been anointing whose hands are stretched over the people. In the name of Jesus Christ, I want you to think of whatever it is. If it's rejection, the spirit of rejection, as I pray, I want you with your mouth to confess an affirmation and say, I reject the spirit of rejection. Come on, let's reject rejection. I reject the spirit of rejection. Say it. I reject the spirit of rejection. I reject the spirit of rejection. I reject the spirit of the orphan. Yes. I reject the spirit of the orphan. I reject the spirit of the orphan. I have the spirit of sonship. Say it. 
I have the spirit of sonship. Say it, I have the spirit of sonship. I have been adopted. Say it, I have been adopted. I am a joint heir with Jesus. Say it, I am a joint heir with Jesus. All things are mine. Say it, yeah, hallelujah. All things are mine. I have the name of Jesus. Say it, the name of Jesus is on me. Say it, say it, let the devil hear it. The name of Jesus is on me. Let him hear you say it with your mouth. Yes. Every demon, I take authority over you in Jesus' name. And I command every demonic spirit operating in the soul or attached to the body of everybody right now who is at the front. Yeah, and those also who are in the church and those who are online who will acknowledge with me. We take authority because we too are dominions. We are dominions. We are principalities too. And we have powers too. Except we have more power. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Therefore we take authority over every demonic spirit. Trying to bring their purpose to bear. And we pray for release. Yes. Of everybody from the bondages of hell. Everyone. And I pray that the spirit of sonship and they know now we belong oh no we know we don't no more anxieties no 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 we don't live that way fear has torment perfect love cast away all fear we have perfect love we are loved by the father loved by the father he loves us and he didn't come to destroy or judge us blessings upon you walk now i pray Walk now. If you want to talk to me personally, you can talk to me. I'll stay right here if you want to. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree upon you that you are free of every spirit that attached to you by whatever means it came to give spirit of timidity. Stop being timid in Jesus' name. You don't have the spirit of timidity. You have the spirit of power, of love, and of a sound man. You are bold as a lion. That's who you were designed to reflect. I want you to begin to show it in Jesus' name. The spirit of sonship is yours. You are a son. You are a daughter. You belong. Hallelujah. It is yours. The same for every single one of you. In the name of Jesus. You are powerful. I have seen it. The spirit of sonship is upon you. Upon you. The spirit of sonship is upon you. You don't have to be broken all the time. He has made you whole. You don't have to walk crushed. You don't have to walk be, be, being a victim. You are more than an overcomer through Christ who loves you. You can have victory over everything in your life, even diseases. I decree upon you what God has already said upon you, that you are a child of God, that you are adopted. You are a daughter of God, and he loves you, and he wants his love to flow inside of you. Fool you to overflowing. So now you bless everybody else with the joy and the love that he has put inside of you. Stop being pitiful for yourself. You are powerful, you're not pitiful. Uh, I'm just tired of that. I'm just tired of that. People who are joined. You are joined with God. You're married to him. With the most powerful being in the world. Everything just keeps beating you up. No more of that. My time is up, sorry. Oh, la da la la. I pray for anybody who any brings diseases upon. That was never intended to be your disease. But every time you open your big mouth, you keep claiming it. You keep saying it is yours. I am this and I am that and I am this. Say what God says. No matter what anybody else, say what God said you are. No matter what. 99 years old, God says you are a father. You are a mother. I'm 99. God says with God, nothing shall be impossible. Okay, I'm, I'm poor, I'm poor. I can't, I can't. I don't have, I don't have. Quit saying that. Until the reality manifests, claim it. In the name of Jesus, say this is who God say I am. That reality will come to pass if I confess it with my mouth and my affection follows it. I love you.
I love you. I love you. We're going to end with that song. We're not going to change this song, okay? God bless you. I know you have to go to your classes. Let me pray for you. Oh, Lord, I... We're doing spiritual business. Don't worry about your class. We'll let you go in just a while. Oh, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come. And I come because a man who is enjoined with a woman, the moment he set his affection on her, and somebody asks him, do you? And he says, I do. From that moment, they are attached. And they become one. One in purpose, one in everything. The enemy wants to destroy marriages more than anything in the whole wide world. Because it reflects the image of God. He will not touch that one. I decree it in Jesus' name. He will not touch that one. Hands off that one. Hands off. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for Chris and his wife right now. And I pray that every attached demonic spirit, generationally, or through choices that was made and affections that were expressed, or through affirmations that were made that conscripted demons to them to carry out a purpose that's not their purpose, it is canceled now by faith that we speak in Jesus' name. They are in Christ and the reality of Christ is theirs and they are predestined to be conformed to the pattern of Jesus Christ. They too will rise from everything that is dead around them. They too will rise and I pray that the spirit of the resurrection of Christ will be there. I pray, Father, against every demonic spirit and command every demonic spirit that manifests attached to them in any way to rub their joy and steal it. You are gone in Jesus' name. And you cannot ever return. Doors are slammed shut. Keys were snatched from you long time ago. It is so. We will now affirm success. will be affirmed. Abundance. We are no longer children. That stage passed. This is the year of jubilee for the church when all slaves are set free in Jesus' name. We pray freedom over her in the name of Jesus Christ and over the family. Greatness has been waiting for that family for a long time. The universe is conspiring to bless them and all will see, I decree it in the name of Jesus Christ, all will see the manifestation of the goodness and graceness of God in this marriage and in her life and in his life. We ask it and we call it so by faith. In Jesus' name, you are also well from all diseases that exist in your body that you know or don't know. In the name of Jesus Christ, I call that to be so. Check your doctor. In the name of Jesus Christ, he says we can call things that are not as though they were. We have the authority by Christ to do that. We are enjoined with power in his name to do that. Therefore, I declare you to be well. You too and him too in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you. Lord bless you. Father, we pray a blessing over everybody who's here today. As we go to our classes, we pray for the blessed anointment of Jesus Christ to be upon everybody. And listen to me as I close. Watch the thoughts that are emitting from your spirit because they are not your thoughts sometimes. And any thought that comes into your awareness or consciousness that does not conform with who God says you are, immediately when you recognize it, immediately acknowledge it and immediately command it to leave. Because spirits are thought creatures. They inhabit thought. That's not who I am. Change the script. Change the script. Change the script. Change the script. Stop calling yourself what your father called you. You guys are going to make me preach again, so let's get out of here. Thank you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. Let that song be with you as you leave. The Lord bless you. You are dismissed. Hey. Yes. We cry.
You are dismissed to your classes. You more real man. The ground I'm standing on. Oh, Lord, I. Oh, Lord, I. Enjoy.